Hi everyone and welcome back. So in the last video we talked about database module and the config module. In this database module we are using type or module and uh, we wrote the config module which is populating the configurations in the process.env. I mean these are like the, the, the database module and the config module the major building blocks. And after that I did some changes in this uh, auth GraphQL file. Like we have only two queries login and the refresh token. Login is giving that login result. And this is our user GraphQL file where we have a queries and mutation. So what I will do is I will create a domain module and inside that I will put the user module and auth module inside it. So we have user, user service, user module and the auth module. We have a user resolver, user module, user service and uh, like controllers is replaced with the resolver when we talk about Nest.js GraphQL. Right, and we just have a bare bones structure where in the service we are injecting the type ORM repository, and here is our simple user service, auth service, user service. In auth service, we are injecting the user service, config service, and JWT service. We will just fix these imports so we can just get started with writing the further code. So, what we are going to do, we are just going to write a simple login and the sign up APIs. This is the domain module. Inside domain module, we are going to import everything uh, like auth module config module logger module database module so this is our domain module here we are initializing the database module and doing graphql module dot for root and we will just update the app module just a simple empty structure it will be importing a domain module so app module is importing domain module domain module is importing app module and sorry auth module and the user module so this is a simple our app module that we are sending for the bootstrap. We can also pass config module or uh, yeah config module is fine. And we can just remove the unused imports. So this is our domain module. Inside domain module we are importing database module, passing the user entity config module and the logger module. And we'll fix the imports. Okay, so this is pretty much here. We are doing graphical module dot for root. This we have already already written in the earlier video. These are the definition it is going to generate when you start the application and we have only one user entity. So this user entity and we are importing the user module, auth module, logger module, config module and the database module inside it. So domain module is like a root module for us. That is the final main module that we are passing inside app module. Okay. Now, what we can do is we can understand this GraphQL module dot for root. What it is doing, we are doing a dynamic initialization of a GraphQL module dot for root. Now, we'll start adding the query and the mutations. So we already have a schema files created in the, the tot type definitions. And this is the important part here. We are using Apollo Federation driver because we are going to pass this subgraph to the Apollo GraphQL gateway. And that is going to compose the schema definitions exposed from this interface. Now we can just see what APIs we need to write a login and the refresh token. So this is how we write the query here. We'll just change this login to the refresh token. There are two queries login and the refresh token. And uh, this is how we are passing the arguments using ARGS. And these arguments are same what we have defined inside a auth.types.graphql file. Okay, so I mean we just leave this empty structure here we just put a refresh token and this API will what it will do is refresh token query is just going to check if user already logged in and it will just generate a new token and give you back it's not taking any argument as input so we are just leaving the body as empty we will take care of this later in the login so you can see we are taking a login user input same we are defining here so you need to be aware about how we are passing these inputs it should be the same whatever you are defined inside a type.graphql file and here we just put a try catch wrapper that if anything goes wrong we just throw the error or you can just do a logging it's not about just an empty try catch you can just put some logging to check what is the error code you received and here we are calling auth service dot method which is defined inside auth service validate user by password and if we got the result, we will return it. Otherwise, we didn't get the result. So we will just throw authentication error. This is coming from the Apollo Express GraphQL, not able to log in, maybe user email ID, password, whatever. Credentials are wrong. 
okay otherwise return the result this method we can define inside our auth service auth service is already having all the dependencies initialized it is taking uh, it is going to return promise of user entity okay sorry login result login result is what user object and the token now we are getting the input first of all we, you can also do some logging because we already have a logger module so you can say this dot logger dot info and we can print the whole payload whatever we are receiving in the body using json dot stringify so if, let's first take a input this login data input we are getting login user input and we can just say is login data or okay this takes a string as an argument so we can just say json dot stringify and uh, login data now it's all about authentication mechanism login so you have you are passing your login email and a password first of all we may need to validate okay if these both the properties are being passed or not so we will we will do all those things let's say you are passing email we can also do the validation if this email is being passed so user service dot find one by email you are passing login data dot email so first of all we need to check if this email exists in the database if yes then we will match the password using bcrypt so here in the user service we will define this method find one by email and this await this dot user repo dot find where email equal to this find one where email equal to this a simple typo rm query and we need to return it it can return it may return null or it can return the user object so if it is not null we will proceed further so user object this is fine if user is null that means we can throw authentication error authentication error unauthorized error or this authentication error we can use here provided by graphql please provide a valid email because this email doesn't exist in database so after doing this uh, if till now we are good that means email exists in the database and then we can start uh, looking for the password match so initialized with password match false and we are going to use a bcrypt so let's put it the try catch here and here we can just say uh, is match equal to await this dot compare password we are going to write another method in the same class where we are going to pass both the password values first of all let's define the compare password it's a private async method compare password uh, and what compare password does is it takes two uh, inputs the entered password or the database password database password is a second argument and then we can do is return bcrypt.compare await bcrypt.compare and we can just pass both the arguments it is going to return a boolean and bcrypt you need to import everything as a bcrypt from bcrypt that's good okay compare password we need to pass two arguments here one is the entered password and the database password I mean the value is inside the database if is match is true that means we got the match we can also do a lot of other validations like okay first of all the email and password both the properties has been entered for that we can just use because the the only thing is here we don't have a validation pipe same as the nest.js rest api controller but we can still create a dto classes and we can write a class validator dot validate method so here export class uh, user auth and here we can have both the properties which is uh, username sorry email and password and use this class validator annotations like is email is is defined is string this is for email and password now you can just create the instance of user auth set both the properties const user equal to new user user auth And then uh, user dot uh, email equal to the payload uh, user dot email. Let's change the variable because user and user both are conflicting. So here let's change it to the user auth dot email user auth dot password and user dot password. Okay, now in the class validator, how we can validate? That we can see in the documentation also. Here we created a classes and we set both these properties there. So class validator nest js. Here we just create a simple class, and then you can set both the properties. And then there is a validate method provided by class validator. 
this we can just simply explore like this so there is a validate method validate object and then it returns an error object so we can just copy and paste it and we will just do the validation in the same way validate we will get from class validator and here we are passing user auth object if errors are there right that means we are done we can just throw a bad request exception if error dot length is greater than zero otherwise we are good we can proceed with the here we don't need to check now user has email or not because yes it has it because we are doing validation and now here we can just generate a token if there is a match found create token and we pass the user object create token is just another method which is just using jwt nestjs module jwt dot sign and you just pass the payload okay this login result is returning two things user and token so user is user object and token so this is what we are returning so we can now define this create token method create token method takes a user as a payload so we need to construct the payload we can also add the expiry of the token if you if the match doesn't found we can just throw a authentication error and then we can just add this create token uh, method private async create token i mean i'm just using my snippet and here we are just creating jwt payload which contains email user id permissions and all okay username is required so we'll just add the username optional and here we are doing jwt service dot sign this is how we are signing a token uh, we may need an expiry or expiry we can get from the environment variable or we will use just uh, this nestjs jwt module in the module initialization we can pass what is the token secret and what is the expiry both of these things we can pass over there only so we can just remove this code from here we will just do it while initializing the nestjs uh, uh, Nest jwt module it is taking secret and private key and this is sign in option we are we need to pass expire in so it depends on you how you want to pass it jwt.sign and here inside an object you can pass the expire in property uh, 15 minute you can hard code it you can get it from the uh, config uh, configuration what is the expire in property so here we are getting the expire in property already there we can use it or we can just pass it in the root module but i mean in the module initialization what will be the default expiry of the token okay so this is how we are creating a simple create jwt and this is a simple login mechanism right this is a simple login user will enter the email and password and we are just returning a login result now we can talk about a user resolver so inside a user resolver we are defining all these methods so get all user what it will do is it is just you returning a type orm where close empty where close find all so it will give you all the the users so in the from the from the schema definition we can we can understand what all queries what all mutations we need to write for the users so first is a user then user and then forget password so this is a users then user and then forget password here it is user by id get user by id so we need to take arguments as an input and that is a resolver so here id is an input for the another second query line number five we are passing id so here this is a forget password we can need to copy the same value forget password for the query and here we need to pass the id so it's like an argument of id which is of type string id of type string and then argument you can import and you can pass the get user by id this method you can pass, create inside a user service it's just a simple where close we need to add where id equal to this id string and just pass the id it's like a find one and it is going to return a single user object forget password is another method forget password means you are not logged in and you send this request so what it will we will do is we will just generate a, a forget password uh, token and we just send you some link on the email it, it this is how it works 
so it takes an email as an input you will say i forgot the password what it happens is it gives you some link on your email when you click on to the link it contains a one one time use of token so that, to that token we will store in the database also so let's say you are you have requested a forget password uh, thing so what we will do is we are going to write this method inside a service a sync forget password and we are getting the email so first of all we'll just generate a random token first of all we'll find this email is valid like uh, the user exists with this email in our system so we can just use this uh, find one by email this is going to return a promise of a boolean like if uh, forget password executed successfully so here first const user equal to this dot user report dot find or we already have a method find one by email if yes if there is no user that means uh, return false otherwise we will just create a token some random uuid you can generate or random characters you can generate through this random bytes module i mean from the bcrypt random bytes and you just generate a hex value of it 32 character to hex and then you just uh, save this token in the database first so here uh, this token value we are going to store inside a user object user dot uh, i think user dot reset token reset user dot uh, okay await we forgot there so here user dot password reset this is an object we are creating token and the expiry we can also create an expiration okay till what expiry this token is valid let's say user is coming back after months then we can check the expiration if it is still valid await user dot save and here we will write a code to send this token in the email that's it that we are not writing right now we just add a updated add field and we'll just save it so this is what forget password looks like similarly you can actually write other queries and mutations which we have another query we have is a create user that we can define so create user is all about uh, how we are doing a so now we are adding the mutation which is create user and this is the create user taking create user input so input type is create user input we need to use the same input type and these input types are already available from the auto generated code create user input here also the same problem we are not using dtos and validation pipes so either you can write as some some custom uh, DTO class and then use the class validator to validate the payload coming from the request object okay I'm getting the username email first name last name password or whatever the properties you are passing in the sign up and then if not then you can return the errors I mean errors are also we need to flatten the errors coming from the class validator so what we will do is we got the this user input we will call the user service method so here we got the user input and uh, we can write a DTO it so this create user input has a username email password and username email password either we update this schema and then regenerate the type definitions regenerate this auto generated class but that's another time so it's just an example you can use uh, whatever you want username email password and then just write a DTO DTO class and then just create an instance of it here we are getting the username password and email and then we can create a user sign up const uh, user sign up equal to new user sign up and then we set all these properties to the user sign up object dot email equal to email user sign up dot password equal to password and user sign up dot username equal to username okay and then you can just do a validate same as we have done errors equal to await validate and just pass this uh, user sign up object if there, there are errors which has a length greater than zero that means your validation failed we need to check if error dot length is greater than zero then we can just return flatten this uh, errors and we can send a bad request exception to the client this is a nest js generated error and then return, otherwise return await this dot user service dot create and pass the the user input create user input now the user service can just uh, 
check what is in the payload and it will create the user so we will just uh, write the create uh, method inside the user service so async create and uh, we are taking the user input create user input and then a lot of things we can do is first of all we can check if the user already exists in database with the same email and then we can just return a conflict exception or bad request exception that is the first thing we will do and uh, we will just generate the hash value of the password which is we just do a, we can use a bcrypt dot hash and pass the salt value so we already have a bcrypt here we can just write a private async hash password and we are passing the input value so it's going to return bcrypt dot hash password is an input string input and this is how we convert it now this is like we just generated the values now we can just check saved entity equal to the payload this is user entity uh, create user input and the password and uh, input and then uh, first name last name email property or whatever because first name last name we are not passing so we'll skip that we'll just say email equal to lowercase email this is another property we have in database input dot email dot to lowercase okay this is save entity we can do is now we got everything what we need we can just do a try catch and just try to save it throw error and here we what we can do is first of all we can just check uh, if user already exists otherwise this dot user repo dot save first of all find one by email and here we are passing the input dot lowercase email if there is a user already exist then we can return a bad request exception and we can just say okay user already exist we cannot create uh, this user otherwise await this dot uh, user repo dot save and pass the user entity and pass the save entity and we can just return the created user object this is a simple uh, sign up and login we can also add a logger because we can just check okay what is the user has been created this dot uh, logger dot log and we can just uh, pass the whole payload as a string so that will help us to debug things if needed and we'll just return the user object that's it so these both the APIs login and the sign here we are passing the, the password okay we forgot to override the password value whatever coming in the payload we need to create the pass the hash value of the password so uh, here it comes is how we are now there are multiple methods create user and this is how we are defining the input and creating the mutation so there are other methods also available update user uh, create user create user we just only covered and this is how we are converting the resolver we are writing a resolver to add the the mutations and the queries in it okay so then what is the next thing now we have a login and we have a sign up so first we will do the demo and then we will add these uh, jwt strategies and auth guard to once user is logs in user will get a token then how we can protect the other endpoints with that authorization header value and how we validate the token if the token is valid then allow user to access the other admin apis okay get all user update user update password and all those properties